Hello, welcome to Archimedes Coach. In this section, we are going to discuss here about the biochemistry and about the carbohydrate metabolism. In the carbohydrate, we are going to discuss about the glucose basically. And uh, in this section, we are going to see glucose transported inside our cell. How the glucose is entered in our cell? Basically, it is happened due to the glucose transporters. Suppose any cell is here and we want here a lot of G stands for glucose is outside the cell and we want to end this cell inside the uh, cell this glucose entered how it happens for this here is a special type of transporter are present if you want to enter this glucose inside the cell and this transporters are called as basically glucose transporters so we are going to see here basically glucose transporter how the glucose is entered inside the cell and glucose is you know it is the energy source for the any cell it is the energy for any cell and through this energy the cell is going to survive in our body so let's start our topic there are two types of glucose transporter which leads to the transport of glucose inside the cell there are two types the types of glucose transporter one is SGLT another one is GLUT GLUT or SGLT the GLUT is stands for sodium dependent glucose transporter it is the full from it S stands for sodium glucose sodium dependent glucose transporter GL stands for glucose T stands for transporter so there is a sodium dependent glucose transporter it means the sodium is somehow helping the transporting of glucose that's why their name is sodium dependent Matlab sodium depending glucose transporter next one we can see the sodium independent glucose transporter that is glute that is glucose transporter glute gl means glucose duty that is glucose transporter gl you glucose and transport this glucose transporter are sodium independent means there is no need of any sodium to enter inside the cell or somehow they are going to recognize their action here so there is a two different types of transporters working either one is SGLT or GLUT GLUT that one is the GLUT glucose independent that is sodium independent transporter and the next one is sodium glucose transporter now we start on the first one SGLT sodium dependent glucose transporter in which sodium is dependent means sodium is required for the transport it is depend on the secondary active transport what does it mean secondary active transport you already discussed in the general bio, uh, sorry general physiology so you can go and learn there but uh, I'm telling you in this type of active transport the ATP is not directly utilized by the cell it means they are acting somehow indirectly so let's it is unidirectional they are transporting the glucose in the cell unidirectionally it means they are just uh, transporting the glucose inside the cell and these transporters are working these transporters of glucose are working against the concentration gradient against the concentration gradient that's why they are called an active transport if the any transporter is going to transport something against the gradient that is called as the simple against the concentration gradient there is a requirement of ATP or the energy source so this is the cell here we want to add something inside the cell it means we want to add something inside the cell then what is the preferable energy is needed suppose that the glucose is higher in amount inside the cell inside these cells let me clear it suppose that here is the any cell and glucose is higher in amount in this cell it means and here glucose we want to add this glucose also inside the cell it means the concentration gradient where is higher inside the cell will be higher and lower is where outside but we are working against the concentration gradient that is the main uh, working here by the SGLT pathway now let's see what are the types of SGLT in our body the SGLT is having type 1 and type 2 type 1 where the location the sites of the SGLT1 is it in our body in intestine in all the gut digestive tract region the SGLT1 is present and they are going to transport the glucose inside the cell and after it inside the body next one is the renal tubules in our kidney the renal tubules region the SGLT1 is present and next one is SGLT2 in the renal tubules only that is glute and defects if the any defects in the patient is having 
SGLT2. If they are not present, it will be leads to the renal glycosuria. Means due to the kidney, the patient having glucose in our urine. That's why leads to the glycosuria. Let's start. The second one is GLUT. GLUT1 is sodium independent. All I told you, the GLUT1 is sodium independent. There is no any role of the sodium here. It means they are transported somehow without energy. And it is a type of passive transport is working here. That is a special type of passive transport that is facilitated diffusion. There is a facilitated carrier mediated diffusion is occur here. And that is the passive type of diffusion. All I told you, the passive processes is no need of energy. And they are working basically against the concentration or similar to the concentration. They are working not against the concentration. They are going to a, a, against the, they are, sorry, they are not going to against the concentration gradient. They are just following the concentration gradient. Where the molecules are less, they are moving towards them. So it's simple. They are moves along the concentration gradient, not against the, they are the ping pong mechanism. Ping pong mechanism is basically they are transporting from the lower concentration to higher concentration, or higher concentration to lower concentration. They are moving from higher concentration to lower concentration. Next one, their graph of this glute transportation will be the depending with the velocity, they are coming with a hyperbolic graph. Hyperbolic graph is basically like this. These graphs are called as hyperbolic graphs in our any exam if the hyperbolic graph is representing like this that is the hyperbolic graph you can see here is the velocity and here is the substrate concentration what is it if there is a simple passive diffusion is occur it means the passive diffusion is occur when the higher concentration is somewhere and the lower concentration is somewhere the higher concentration is moving towards the lower concentration and then maintaining the equilibrium at the last it means they are going into the straight way if there is a passive transmission but the what happened in the active cases or the active transport mechanism in the SGLT basically or in the glute transcription case we can see there is a similar level they are moving up but after that they are constant because of the facilitated diffusion in the glute action so these are the graph no need to learn it just remember what happened in the according to concept we have to learn about it how they are coming next we are going to see the some tabular form of all the glucose glucose uh, transporters here we are going to see what is the location what types of glute in the different parts of bodies are spread in our body let's see the glute first glute first is present or the widely distributed where in our body that is the brain region in the placenta in the kidney or in the RVCs, glute one type of glucose transporter, glucose independent transporter is present and their concept will be, they are the insulin independent and they are the basal glucose uptake metabolism is occurring here. So you have to learn basically the distribution where they are present and what is the insulin independent, yeah it is independent because it is going through the passive transport. Next we can say glute 2. They are, they are present in our body, beta cells of the pancreas, glute 2 types of glucose transporter, sinusoidus of the liver and next basolateral surface of the intestine and next PCT part, prox proximal convoluted tubule part of the nephron. In these parts, the glute 2 types of glucose transporter is located. Location is very very important because in examination the location is asked the glute 2 receptors are present where in your body which of the flowing is correct so it is very important to learn what all the examples next what is it insulin independent yeah it is also insulin independent this glucose transporter also insulin independent that decreases the blood glucose they transport the glucose to the blood and glucose reabsorption is occur here so these are the following pathway they are done by them next one is glute 3 glute 3 is present in our neurons there is energy source and they are the highly affinity the glute 3 is having higher affinity for the glucose so it is uh, the concept about the glute 3 next glute 4 the glute 4 is basically present in our heart it's very important here because it is present in our heart it is present in adipocyte cells of the fat cells or the skeletal muscles so glute 4 is a special type because it is present in our heart in the skeletal muscles or in the adipocytes or all the peripheral organs so it is basically insulin dependent here is the important point here it is the insulin dependent here it is important all the other glute 1 glute 3 what we discussed till now glute 2 these all are insulin independent
but this is insulin dependent and they also decreasing the glucose in our blood and that leads to the post perineal state of the patient and it leads to after the meal basically next we can see glut 5 glut 5 is present in our testis present in the sperm present in the intestinal luminal side means what the surface of the intestine is present luminal side the cells is having the glut 5 receptors are present and they are transporting the fructose not the glucose they are the fructose transporter so what type of glut it is uh, what type of glut transporter is going to transport the fructose that is glut 5 next we can see glut 6 glut 6 is present in our spleen it is present in the leukocytes and they are having action is pseudo gene there is a no transporter function this type of glu glute 6 type of transporter is having no any role in the glu glucose transporter next we can see glute 7 glute 7 type of receptors is present in liver endoplasmic reticulum liver endoplasmic reticulum they are situated so next we can see how they are going to transport in our body suppose that this is the luminal side this is the intestinal cell and this is our blood how you can see look on it this is our lumen lumen this is the cell of our body intestinal cell and this is the blood vessels here so we want we take any food is here the glucose is present we want to take inside the cell after that this glucose we want in our blood it's simple so there is several mechanism to walking here through this transport of this glucose inside the blood we want the glucose inside the blood first and after that the blood is distributing they are the circulatory system yeah it is true the circulatory system is leads to the transporting of all glucose inside the whole of our body so it's so simple next we are going to see how this mechanism is working here if you look on the luminal side it means inside our gut there is a galactose either the glucose is present the galactose or glucose they are entered in the periphery in the intestinal cells through the sglt pathway they are enter sglt1 receptor sglt1 through which the glucose and galactose is going to be transferred inside the luminal cells along the sodium because that the sodium dependent channel next we can see there is a fructose glucose and galactose they are transported also inside the luminal cells and through the glut 5 recept or glut 5 channel basically so now you tell me the sglt is going to transport what they are going to transport glucose galactose along the sodium it means they are the sodium dependent activity but glut 5 is going to transfer the fructose galactose and glucose they are also transporting them but in the little amount fructose with the, along with them glucose and galactose also so they are transporting inside the intestinal cells until now now we are moving towards the blood vessels how we are going to transport them into the blood vessels from the intestinal cells look on it if the fructose and glucose galactose these all intestinal cells are going to transport it by the glut 2 into the fructose into the blood glucose and galactose transport through the glut 2 type of channels or the glut 2 type of reset transporters after that this there is a sodium potassium pump for the sglt what the sglt is going to transfer inside our intestinal lumen that is glucose and galactose inside our term in, inside our intestinal cells now and they are going to transport it later on in the blood vessels so how there is a, a special type of transporter is working here their name is sodium potassium atipase pump there is a sodium is moving outside and potassium is coming inside it means positive charge is moving outside and the atp is working here it means that's why their name is atipase pump so atp is utilized and along with this due to the this arrangement due to the this arrangement the sodium is going out and the glucose is going to transported inside the blood vessels so it's very simple next we are going to see several important questions here insulin responsive glucose transporter what are the insulin responsive insulin dependent that one is the glut 4 glut 8 and glut 12 next one is fructose transporter tell me the names fructose transporter that is glut 5 and glut 11 here is the fructose transporter next one you can see what are the most widely distributed glut that is glut 1 is the mostly distributed in our body 
and most abundant glucose transported in the RBCs that is GLUT1 once again. Next one the GLUT present in our blastocyst stage of the embryonic development that is GLUT8. The neuronal glucose transporter inside the neurons the glucose transporter is GLUT3. So these are the important points regarding the glucose transporter in our body how the glucose is going to enter in our blood cells or the sorry different cells of our body. So it's very important to know it's very important to know about the examples of these transporters. So we have to learn the examples very first and later on you can recognize what are the glucose transporter is going to transport in our body different regions of the body. So thank you. See you in next video.